If you read through the descriptions of some of these old cabinets of wonders, you find this totally eclectic mix. Mysterious relics? Check. Bizarre mechanical contraptions? Check. Weird plants and animals? Well, I'll let you and the sheep which looks like it has an octopus for its head be the judge of that. Anyways, one commonality is that a true wonder should make us question whether something we thought we knew about the world might in fact be completely and totally wrong. So in this spirit, we're going to demonstrate something that's just as surprising as when it was first discovered in the 1660s. That if you take two pendulum clocks and put them in a room together, they'll mysteriously synchronize with each other. But how can the most basic mechanical objects behave in a way which is, quite frankly, kind of eerie? Well, our story begins in 1665 when physics hero Christian Huygens is sick and stuck at his home in The Hague in Holland. And he's surrounded by pendulum clocks because, well, he invented them, and he's constantly trying to improve their design. And so he's in his room, and suddenly he realizes that the motions of his clocks have become synchronized, even though the clocks aren't touching. And he's so surprised by this that he doesn't really have a good term to describe what's going on. So, in his letters, he writes of the clocks as having a sort of sympathy between them. But to use this word sympathy is pretty out of character for Huygens, because sympathy refers to more of an occult or esoteric notion of how objects can act on each other over a distance. It's the reason why, for example, one yawn causes another yawn. And it's the reason why a drum made out of lambskin will go quiet if there's a drum made out of wolfskin nearby. A fact, if you will, that inspired the Czech general Jan Zizka to request that a drum be made out of his own skin so that it could be brought into battle against his enemies. But the most amazing application of sympathy remained hidden to mankind up until the 1500s, when it was discovered that sympathy could be reduced to powdered form and used to heal wounds. This powder, the so-called powder of sympathy, was a medicine that wasn't applied to the wounded patient, but rather to a piece of his bloodied clothing, or even the offending weapon itself. What the powder was, and how it worked, was something of a mystery, although no less an authority than Francis Bacon helpfully instructs us that it's made from a mixture of skull moss and the fat from a boar and a bear killed in the act of mating. A bear. Unbelievable. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It's gross. Anyways, someone like Huygens would never have had any patience for this sort of silliness. Huygens was into the new philosophy, the mechanistic metaphysics of René Descartes, where all physics is nothing more than matter in motion, or, in other words, that the universe worked basically like an elaborate machine, not all that different from, well, a clock. But what's the point of having a fancy new metaphysics if you can't do anything useful with it, right? So Huygens promotes his pendulum clocks as a way to help mariners find their longitude at sea, which puts the most pressing technological and scientific challenge of the day. And Huygens saw the sympathy of his clocks as proof of just how amazingly well-suited they were to this task. Of course, he never doubted for a second that the cause of the sympathy had to be something mechanical, and like a good Cartesian, he initially suspected subtle currents of air moving between the clocks. In the meantime, though, it would be wrong to think that just because the mechanical philosophy was all the rage, that the world had no place for sympathy. Really, sympathy just needed some better marketing to get with the times. So along comes Kenelm Digby, English aristocrat, adventurer, and all-around nut, who in 1658 authored a treatise explaining that the powder of sympathy also operated according to mechanical principles. Gone were the copulating born bear, the new explanation relied upon tiny particles wafted along by subtle currents of air. Well, okay, I know what you're thinking. It all sounds convincing, but it's the 1600s. You need to know if this new and improved powder of sympathy is somehow connected to the longitude problem. Amazingly, the answer is yes. In 1688, an anonymous pamphleteer proposed the following ingenious technique. A dog is stabbed with a knife and then bandaged up. The dog goes to sea with the ship, but some of the bloody gauze stays home in port. At set times, the bloody gauze is sprinkled with the powder of sympathy and exposed to a flame. This causes the dog to yelp in anguish, which signals to the mariners what time it is back home. Knowing this, and their own local time at sea, is sufficient to allow them to compute their longitude. But whatever its nautical merits, it wasn't sympathy which caused Huygens' clocks to synchronize, and it wasn't the air either. It was subtle vibrations of the clocks through the wall in which they were both mounted which caused them to couple to each other. And we're going to employ the same basic concept to make a curiosity of these two metronomes synchronizing with each other. But I want to do this in a way that keeps the mechanism of the coupling just mysterious enough that the possibility of a sympathetic interaction might not seem so absurd. So the idea I had was to place the metronomes on a shelf that sits on rollers. Now, in order to get the metronomes to couple, the momentum of their pendulums, which is pretty small, has to be able to move the metronomes, the shelf, and the rollers. This means that all the moving parts need to be very light and the surfaces need to be very smooth and level. It took some experimentation, but a thin piece of brass for the shelf, two marker caps as rollers, and some plastic tracks on the brackets did the trick. And as we watch the metronome slowly come into synchrony, I think it's difficult not to feel a twinge of surprise at a phenomenon that refuses to be as obvious as perhaps we assumed it should. And insofar as it excites within us even a modest amount of amazement, 
This simple apparatus induces a sympathy between ourselves and those individuals who first struggle to understand its meaning. It induces a sympathy between our present age and an age where the mechanical and the miraculous existed side by side. Neither stands convincing enough to displace the other. Indeed, a pendulum clock is just as useless as the powder of sympathy when trying to find the longitude at sea. And the synchrony of clocks is itself a coupling, a coupling between two worlds, a world of occult powers and virtues which act over a distance, and a mechanistic world which flatly denied that action at a distance was possible. Huygens was correct that this particular phenomenon is mechanical, but it's one of the great ironies of history that Isaac Newton, in his attempts to build upon the mechanical philosophy, ended up revealing that the entire structure of the universe is determined by gravity, a force which acts at a distance across the vacuum of space. Newtonian metaphysics ends up being the complete antithesis of Cartesian mechanism, and Newtonian gravitation, which Huygens found deeply troubling, really is like a universal sympathy, but one that's infinitely more wondrous than any occultist powder could ever be. So oddly enough, I suppose one could argue that, in some ways, modern science resembles more the occult world of sympathy than it does the mechanistic world of Descartes. Indeed, the 17th century controversy over the sympathy of clocks is eerily similar to the modern controversy over the so-called McClintock effect, which claims that the menstrual cycles of women will synchronize if they live in close proximity to each other. And all of this supposedly happens because of pheromones, which are tiny particles wafted along by subtle currents of air, something Ken L. Digby would have recognized immediately as the powder of sympathy, although repackaged in modern terminology. But for me at least, above and beyond all these connections, I think that the real significance of the synchrony of clocks is that it shows us how wonder is often found in places where you suspect it the least. And these metronomes, inasmuch as they're able to remind us of this, just proves that they really are able to act on us over a distance. And who knows, maybe after seeing this, you feel the same way too. Well, in any case, thanks for watching, and until next time, I hope this gave you something to wonder about.